Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to customize your Blogger homepage with this design right here. So here we can see we have this 3D rotating cube. And when we move this mouse pointer, we can see that this cube rotates. And uh, right now, this is how our Blogger website looks right now. So I'm using a theme called Contempo Light, which comes by default with Blogger. And here for this blog post, I have just added some custom code to make this uh, design look like this. I have also created a video on how to create this design for your blog post. You can watch that if you want to make a design like this. But for now, we'll just add this design into our Blogger homepage. So we'll just add it over here, just below the header. And it doesn't matter if you have this design or not. So let's get started. <laughs> Now the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out where we need to add our design. So we need to figure out the structure of our blogger homepage. So let's right click over here and click on inspect. And here we can see this is how the website is structured. And if you scroll down, here we have this header. And below the header we have this blog post. So we need to add our design below this header tag. So we need to look for the header ending tag in our theme code. So let's go to our blogger dashboard and let's go to theme and let's click on this arrow and click on edit HTML. And here I'll just search for the ending tag of the header. So I'll just press command F or if you're using Windows, you can just press control F and let's type less than forward slash header. So here we can see this is the ending of the header. Now we need to display this design only on the home page. So we need to add an if condition in our theme code. And here we can see we have already added some if condition for this design right here. So I'll just copy and paste this same code. You can just type what you see over here. And here I'll just end the if tag. So I'll just type less than forward slash b colon if. Now in here we can add the code of our design. So let's go to our source code. And I will leave the link of the source code in the description. So this is the source code. So I'll just copy all of this from here till here. And this is the HTML. So you can go ahead and change these uh, data over here. You can change the H1. You can change the text of the paragraph and all these uh, cube phase text over here. So let's copy this from here and I'll just paste it over here. Right now let's add our CSS. So let's go back to our source code and let's go to the style or CSS file. And let's copy all the CSS from here. Now we don't want to copy the styles of this uh, body element over here because uh, it will affect all the other elements in our theme. So I'll just copy the whole CSS from here and I'll just delete this body CSS in our theme code. So let's go back to our theme code and let's scroll up and let's go to the CSS of the theme code. So here we can see this is the CSS. So I'll just make some space over here and I'll just create a comment. I'll just type 3D rotating cube and let's paste the CSS over here. And I'll just delete the CSS of the body. Right now we have to add the JavaScript. But before that we need to make sure that uh, we don't have any selectors clashing with the theme. So in our theme we already have an element with this uh, tag of header. And I think we may also have an element with a class of container. So what we will do is we will add a unique selector. So let's scroll down to our HTML. I'll just search for the ending tag of header. And here for the container, I'll just change this class to main container. So now this is a custom class. Right now let's scroll back to the CSS and uh, let's make the changes over here. So here instead of container, we need to change all of these to main container. So the header is also inside the container. So here we can see the header is inside the container. So we have changed the name of the container division to main container. So let's tap main container. And I'll just change all this container class to main container. So just copy this from here. And paste it over here. And let's do the same for this header h1. And then we have the header subheading. So we'll do the same over here as well. And then we have the cube container. So it is also inside the main container. So I'll just type main container over here. And uh, here also let's type main container and I'll do the same for all these uh, selectors so that we have a unique selector. All right now let's add the JavaScript. So let's go back to our end of header tag and here I'll just create a script tag. And 
and here in this script tag we will add the javascript so let's go back to our source code and let's go to the main.js file and let's copy everything from here and let's go back and paste it over here inside the script tag and now let's click on save right now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and here we can see we have this cube and we can rotate the cube by moving the mouse pointer and the text is not being displayed because uh, it is in white color now in our original design we also have a background color of black so let's do that let's go back to our code and uh, what we will do is uh, here we will add an outer division in our original design we had added the black background color to the body but uh, we have deleted the body styles from the theme code so we need to add an outer division so let's create a division and I'll just give it a class of cube outer and we need to close the division over here right now we need to add some styles to this cube outer so let's go to the CSS and here I'll just type cube outer and we'll just set the background color to black and let's save it and let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and now we can see we have this black background color and uh, it looks all right now if you're using the default version of the theme and if you don't have this design right here in your blogger website then you may have some problems in the styling you may not be having the full width over here for this design so let me quickly show you how to fix that let's go back to our code let's scroll down and find the start of the body tag here we can see this is where the body starts and in that we have different B class elements over here so these are basically tags that are used to add classes to the parent element so right now body is the parent element so if we have this condition fulfilled then this class with the name of search v will be added to this body so in the same way we have added our custom B class element over here so here we can see if the blog URL is the home page URL which means if we are on the home page then we need to add the home page class to the body so if you go back to our website and if I right click over here and go to inspect here we can see for the body we also have a class called home page now we won't be having this class in any other pages it will be just available for the home page so let's go back to our code so this B class element will add the home page class to the body and if you scroll up and go to the CSS here we can see we are adding this line of CSS to the home page centered so whenever we are on the home page we will add this line of CSS to the centered division so if you go back to our website structure here we can see we have this division in the class of centered and by default it had a max width in the theme so here we can see it had a max width of 922 pixels what we are doing over here is that we are just setting the max width to unset so that the max width limit is removed so now we can see we have this full width for this design now the next thing we need to do is we need to make this responsive so right now if I decrease the width of the browser window this is how it looks it doesn't look good so we need to make it responsive so the first thing we will do is we will always set this cube to a certain amount from the right side so right now if I just decrease the width of the browser window we can see that the cube moves to the right so what we will do is we'll just fix the cube to a certain position so let's go back to our CSS and let's go to the cube container so here we have the cube container so I'll just set the position to absolute and from the right we will have a distance of 80 pixels and uh, let's save it now let's go back to our design and uh, let's refresh this page and now we can see this is how it looks so if I decrease the width of the browser window the cube will still remain in the same position and I'll also set a width of 90% for the container so that we have some padding so let's go back to our CSS and let's go to the main container and here for the main container I'll just set a width of 90% and let's save it and let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and now if we decrease the width of the browser window now we have a width of 90% now we want this box to move behind this text so let's go back and uh, for the cube container we will add a z index 
and I'll just set it to negative one. And now let's go ahead and save this. And now let's go back to our website and refresh this page. And now the cube is not being displayed because it is behind all the other elements in our theme. Now to fix that, you have to go back to your CSS and you have to add a line of code to the main container division, which is cube outer. So you need to type isolation, isolate. And now let's go ahead and save this. And now if we go back to our website and refresh this page, now we can see that our cube is being displayed and it is behind the text. Right now let's add a media query to make it work for smaller screens. So what we will do is we'll just decrease the opacity of this uh, cube and we'll also decrease the font size of this heading. So let's go back to our CSS and uh, let's scroll down. And here I'll just create a media query. I'll just tap at media. And let's set the max width to 720 pixels. So whenever the screen size is less than 720 pixels, all the CSS inside this block will be added to our design. So let's type cube container. And I'll just set the opacity to 0 0.4. And let's type main container, header h1. And let's set the font size to 60 pixels. And let's save it. Right now let's go back to our design and let's refresh this page. And let's decrease the width of the browser window. And now we can see that the changes have been applied. But for the mobile devices, we don't want to have this rotation based on the mouse pointer. We want it to rotate by default. So we will add an animation of rotation for the mobile devices. And for larger screens, we will have this rotation based on the mouse pointer. So let's do that. Let's go back to our code. And let's scroll down and let's create an animation. So let's type at keyframes and let's name the animation rotate anim and here we'll just type 2 and it will start from the default state to this state right here. So here I'll just type transform rotate x and here let's type negative 360 degrees and rotate y and here I'll just type negative 360 degrees. Right now let's add this animation to the cube. So I'll just type cube container. And if you go back to our HTML, here we can see we have this cube inside the cube container. So let's type dot cube. And here we'll just type animation. And the name of the animation is rotate anim. And we will have it for 10 seconds for infinite. And we'll also set the easing to linear so that it has the same speed. Right now let's save this. And let's go back to our home page and uh, let's refresh this page. And here we can see we don't have the animation for the rotation. Let's decrease the width of the browser window. Now we can see that the cube is being rotated. But if we move the mouse pointer, it also rotates with the mouse pointer. So we need to disable the mouse pointer rotation when we are on smaller screens. So let's do that. Let's go to the JavaScript. I'll just search for the end of the header tag. And let's scroll down and here we can see we have the JavaScript. And this is where we are adding the code for the rotation based on the mouse pointer. So what we will do is we'll just create a variable called rotate flag. And I'll just set it to false by default. And here I'll just add all this code inside an if condition. So here let's type if rotate flag. And let's close the curly braces over here. So now these lines of code will only run if we have the rotate flag set to true. Now let's write the code to set the rotate flag to true or false. So here you have to type window dot add event listener. And we need to listen for the resize event. The resize event is when we resize the browser width. So let's create an arrow function over here. And here let's type if window dot match media and here we'll just type min width and I'll just set it to 721 pixels because we had set a max width of 720 pixels for the media query in the CSS. So that's why we are adding a min width of 721 pixels. So whenever the screen size is greater than 721 pixels, this code will be executed. So let's write the code. So here I'll just type rotate flag equals true. And if that's not the case, 
then let's add an else over here and in the else I'll just type rotate flag equals false right now this code will only run when we resize the browser window but we need to run this code at the beginning as well so let's copy this and paste it outside right now let's click on save and let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and the rotation is not working so there's some problem in our code let's right click over here and go to inspect and let's go to the console and here we have this error so here we can see it says uncaught syntax error and let's click on this line of code so this is where the error is we need to close this starting parenthesis over here so let's go back and let's do that so here let's add one more closing parenthesis and we need to do the same over here as well and we have one more thing we need to fix in our javascript so we need to add all of this inside double quotes so the double quote should be over here outside this parenthesis and it should end over here and here you also have to type dot matches and we also need to add pixels over here right now let's copy this from here and let's paste it down here let's click on save right now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and now we can see that the rotation is working and let's decrease the width of the browser window and now the rotation is not working for the mouse pointer but the animation is working but if we increase the width of the browser window the animation is not working but the rotation of the mouse pointer is working so that's basically how you can make this responsive right so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day Oh, 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 oh,